So there's a video going viral on Twitter right now of a guy absolutely mic dropping when it comes to his argument on climate change. His name is Konstantin Kaizen, and we're gonna watch it. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so I'm blind reacting to this video. I have not seen it before, but it has 5.2 million views on Twitter. Without further ado, let's watch it. Now, I want to talk to those of you who are woke and who are open to rational argument. A small minority, I accept. <laughs> because one of the tenets of wokeness is, of course, that your feelings matter more than the truth. Oof. But I believe in you. Off to a rough start a little bit. <laughs> a little bit condescending, but... I'll allow it. Let's keep watching. I believe there are those of you here who are woke, who are open to rational arguments, so let me make one. We are told that your generation cares more than any other about one issue in particular, and that issue is climate change. Okay. We're told that many of you suffer from climate anxiety. You wish to save the planet. And for tonight, and tonight only, I will join you. I will join you in worshipping at the feet of St. Greta of climate change. Mm. Let us all accept right here, right now, that we are living through a climate emergency and our stocks of polar bears are running extremely low. I join you in this view. I truly do. Now, what are we to do about this huge problem facing humanity? What can we in Britain do? We can only do one thing. You know why? This country is responsible for 2% of global carbon emissions, which means that if Britain was to sink into the sea right now, it would make absolutely no difference to the issue of climate change. Mm. You know why? Because the future of the climate is going to be decided in Asia and in Latin America by poor people who couldn't give a shit about saving the planet. Woo. No, thank you. No, thank you. It's going to be decided by poor people in Asia and Latin America who don't care about saving the planet. You know why? Because they're poor. Because they're poor. I come from Russia, which is not a poor country. It's a middle-income country. 20% of households in Russia do not have an indoor toilet. Hmm. What they have is an outdoor toilet. And I don't mean one of those nice port loos that we get here. I don't even mean a Glastonbury port loo I mean a wooden shack with a hole in the ground that holds a collected fermented memory of the last 10,000 visits. Yeah, what he's saying is very much true. We talk about in the U.S. being environmentalists and being environmentally friendly, and I think that's great, wonderful, as it is in the U.K. or any other country that people are engaging in this sort of activity. But when you take all of that into account, when you take every U.S. citizen or every British citizen engaging in this sort of activity, does it even make a dent in the climate initiatives that we are talking about worldwide? Probably not, because you do have lower income people who have really no other choice but to engage in the sort of activities that they're engaging in that, you know, uh, by virtue of... of using fossil fuels or using the Earth's resources or emitting a lot of trash and carbon and all these different things are harmful to the environment. But what other option do they have if we are not progressing as societies and developing nations in order to you know, give them resources to get out of the situations that they're in currently that are harming the environment? What do we do then? Because like I said, even if the U.S. and all of Great Britain start engaging in the activities that environmentalists deem to be proper to save the earth, it's not going to account for all of the other people in all these other countries who are doing the exact opposite. <laughs> How many of you are going to go home tonight and say, let's rip out our bathroom mm. and erect a Siberian shithouse in the back garden? <laughs> and if you're not, why should they? Hmm. 120 million people in China do not have enough food. I don't mean that they don't get dessert. I mean they suffer from malnutrition. That means that their immune system is breaking down because they don't have enough food. You're not going to get them to stay poor. Imagine you're Xi Jinping, the leader of China. When you were 10 years old, there was a revolution, a cultural revolution in your country. And people came and they... Put your father in prison. Your mother had to denounce him. Your sister killed herself. 
and you, no longer enjoying the protection of your formerly powerful father, were sent to a village where you lived in a cave house. And here you are, decades later, you have clawed your way up the bloody and greasy pole of Chinese politics to be the undisputed supreme leader of the very Communist Party that destroyed your family. And you know that the main thing you have to do to survive and to stay in power is to deliver the one thing that the people of China want, prosperity, economic growth. Where do you think climate change ranks on Xi Jinping's list of priorities? Not very high. A third of all children who live in extreme poverty in the world live in India. Wow. That means they are starving and dying of preventable disease. I want to pause for a second. And so often when we talk about these issues of environmental justice, race, racial justice, you know, feminist justice, we speak from such a position of privilege. We live in our very cushy households with all of our amenities and streaming services and food at the at the top of our of our phones. And we talk about these issues that are so much larger than us, that affect so many more people than just our, you know, our, our suburb in whatever given town we're living in. And we never take into account the poor, underdeveloped, underprivileged people who are living in circumstances that are unimaginable to us. I can't imagine being an impoverished, malnourished person in, in India or in China or in Africa or, you, you know, you name it, whatever, whatever country you want to name. I cannot imagine being in those circumstances. And to be offered a way out of that, be it through fossil fuel usage or uh, electricity or any way that is detrimental to the environment and have to turn it away and go, well, no, that's harmful to some sort of planet that we're trying to save. That might be important, right? Our, our planet is very much important. It's very important that we conserve uh, the, the resources that we have. We conserve our time here on this planet. But say that to somebody who does have, who has none of the circumstances that you have, has none of the privilege that you have, has none of the comfort that you have, and is in fact so oppressed that they can't even recognize their own oppression, is so malnourished they don't even have the time to think about other societal factors that are weighing down in their lives and tell them that they're unable to use those resources that they so desperately need in order to lead the comfortable life that brings about these sorts of conversations of climate change and feminism and racial justice. It won't land. It will not land because there are far more important things that are on their minds than that. Now, about 15 months ago, my wife got pregnant. Not me, because we're old school. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I'll give him that. And for nine months, we talked about what our boy would look like. What he might do when he grows up. We looked at baby scans and videos on YouTube about what the fetus looks like at nine months and 12 months and 20 months. And eventually he was born. And he is this cute little bundle of joy. He's cuter than about 80% of puppies. Right? <laughs> now, if you said to me that I had a choice, either my son had a serious risk of starving or dying from a preventable disease in the next year, or I could press a button and he would live he would go to school. He would bring his first girlfriend home. Mm. He'd go to university and graduate and become a woke idiot. <laughs> and then he'd get a job and get married and have children and become a man. But all I have to do is press this button. And for every day of my son's life, a giant plume of CO2 is going to re get released into the atmosphere. Now, you're all very young, and most of you are not parents. Let me tell you something. There is not a parent in the world who would not smash that button so hard their hand bled. He's losing me in the insults, but the argument is very, very sound. There are so many trade-offs we're willing to make for those who we, we love and admire and appreciate. And when you are so far removed from the struggles of other people, you have no sense of perception of those things. None whatsoever. And so many people are leading the life that he just described of knowing that this child is going to be brought into the world and is going to be just a safe haven for things like disease and dysentery and, and so many harmful things that we never have to worry about in our, in our daily lives. And would they trade that away for the press of a button that emits carbon? Yeah. 
absolutely they would. And that's the fight that so many are struggling through right now. The This is wonderful. And there's this brilliant video of uh, a just stop oil protesters. You know, those people who are throwing soup on Van Gogh paintings and super gluing themselves to museum walls being confronted and being said, you know, you've never paid for an electricity bill in your life, have you? Let me ask you, what bills do you currently pay? Who pays for your accommodation at university? My student loan. When, have you ever paid any bills in your lifetime? No. So you don't know what it's like to be a homeowner and not to be able to afford your energy bills and then see some stupid young people throwing soup over a painting in a gallery that has nothing to do with the fact they can't afford to pay their bills. You don't know what it's like to pay a bill, Phoebe, do you? No, but I have empathy for those people. You know, this the climate crisis is fueled, but the cost of living crisis is fueled by the cost of oil crisis. They are both one crisis. It's a crisis of greed of our government and their billionaire friends. What do you understand about an ordinary family who can't afford to pay their fuel bills, who needs ordinary fuel to be delivered, but because of green taxation, their bills are now so expensive they can't afford them? And if we stop oil, how much more expensive do you think fuel's going to be, Phoebe? Or is it that you're just spouting out words that you and your friend think look good? How is it related to stopping oil to throw soup over a painting in a gallery? How is that related? How is it helping the poorest people in my country? You have no idea what it's like to provide for yourself, do you? No, I have no idea what that's like. So look at people who do have that responsibility on their back of providing themselves, of paying for their electricity bills, and tell them to just stop using oil. Tell them that they're going to have to struggle through this process of getting to renewable energy, although, you know, is a, is a wonderful prospect, is not quite ready for the world and the amount of people that we are asking to take on uh, that, that source of energy. Tell them that they're going to have to struggle through $20,000 electricity bills. And these are in privileged nations, developed nations, where we live in cushy comfort. So say that to those who are living in the developed nations. They're going to pay $20,000 for their electricity bill to run their business. And even worse than that, say that to the underdeveloped nations who don't know where their kid's going to eat, don't know where they're going to eat, and if they're going to eat for the night, or if they're going to have to sacrifice that for their children, their family, their peers, their community. Look at them and tell them they have no prospect of using fossil fuels in order to get out of the situation that they're in. You can't. You can't fathom it. You are not going to get these people to stay poor. You're not even going to get them to not want to be richer. And so I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one thing we can do in this country to stop climate change, and that is to make scientific and technological breakthroughs that will create the clean energy that is not only clean, but also cheap. And the, no, thank you. And the only, I, I want everyone to get home on time today, which is not going to happen. And the only thing that wokeness has to offer in exchange is to brainwash bright young minds like you to believe that you are victims, to believe that you have no agency, to believe that what you must do to improve the world is to complain, mm. is to protest, is to throw soup on paintings. There it is. And we on this side of the house are not on this side of the house because we do not wish to improve the world. We sit on this side of the house because we know that the way to improve the world is to work, is to create, it is to build. And the problem with woke culture is that it has trained too many young minds like yours to forget about that. Thank you very much. Hmm. I mean, a mic drop indeed. That's worth 5.2 million views. I could talk about my, my, my slight critiques of what he said, but the foundation of everything that he put forth is so, so, so true. We have all these young people running around saying all the things we need to stop and the things we need to revert back and, and, and change or, or completely erase from the way that we're living right now. Things like oil and gas and, and fracking and all these different things. And they have some sort of semblance of where they want to go. I'm talking about wind and, and, and solar energy, but seemingly no understanding of how unreliable these resources can, can be. 
And while I think everybody in the world wants to do what is right for the world and for the earth, for the most part, there are people who will say, take advantage of the earth until you're, you're, you're blue in the face. But most people want to conserve what we have. Most people want to have a prosperous earth that is giving to, to everyone and allowing everybody to flourish. It's all about how we get there. And we as humans have met so many forks in the road where we had no idea how we were going to survive or what we were going to do. And we innovated out of those issues and out of those problems. Who's to say we cannot do the same when it comes to the issue of climate change? That's not to deny or say that it won't necessarily be catastrophic at some point in our lives, although I don't think in the next 12 years, as some politicians may say. But it's all about how we maneuver our way through this fork in the road. And right now, wind and solar are not the most reliable. They might be renewable, they might be abundant when they are reliable, but in, sometimes, in some cases they're not. And to say we just stop oil or just stop gas uh, just negates what we've done for all of human civilization and all the people who would be harmed in the process of doing that. I'm all for progress. I'm all for conserving the earth because it's going to be something that's necessary for the human species to live on <laughs> into the, the years that we want it to live on to. But how do we go about it? We have always innovated. And again, who's to say we can't do so now? So fight the people who are trying to convince you of your victimization, convince you of your helplessness, or tell you there is only one way to get out of the catastrophe that we are all seemingly living in right now. And think about the people who live far below your means, whose only hope out of the the oppression that they're in right now or the underprivileged status that they're in right now is things like oil and gas and electricity that is reliant on things like oil and gas and think about the remarkable minds that will be born out of those underdeveloped and underprivileged nations being able to move to a place of being able to innovate and use science and technology to the benefit of human beings think about that before we go throw soup on Van Gogh paintings. That is all I ask. And that is seemingly all this man is asking here. And it was a mic drop indeed. Guys, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time we post a new video for you guys, which is every single day. We're always hustling over here and talking about the different topics that need to be talked about and that are apparently causing and creating a lot of anxiety for young people all around the world. Leave a comment down below. What are your views on climate change? And what do you think we should do? Is it stop oil and stop gas? Is it wind and solar? Is it nuclear? Which seems to be a very promising alternative to what we've been doing so far. Let me know your thoughts on climate change. I will admit it's not a topic that I am extremely well versed on, but I know that I don't lie on the catastrophic end of the spectrum when it comes to worrying about these things. Let me know where you stand and have healthy debate in the comments down below. See you next time.